Well, welcome back to Live With The Classic. And if it looks cold, because it is really, really cold, we have uh, had a bit of a snowstorm last night and it's not snowing anymore, but it's really, really windy. So the wind chill is absolutely terrible. I just went to pick up a little bit of fuel in the XJ6 and that's about errands to run as well. Also check the tire pressure all a little bit low. I don't think I checked them when I switched to the winter tires. So that is, uh, that's good. But today is my first day of uh, being completely self-employed. So uh, big milestone and a little bit of a weird thing, but I'll probably get used to it. Taking a little bit of a slow start because I was also uh, a bit unwell or under the weather for the last bit of uh, 2023. A bit of a sinus infection thing going on. so taking it a little easy and you know just starting off the year solely so what i thought we'd do is i have actually taken some notes and i've made a list of all the cars that are on the fleet and what i want to do with them in 2024 and the list is long we have quite a lot of cars on the fleet i think canada we're like 10 or 11 so the fleet is large and we're going to thin it down three of them are going to be for sale uh, one of those is in the Morris and the trading up thing, so we're going to talk about that in a bit. But uh, before we uh, get home and we'll talk about the list which I have here on my phone, I thought I'd give an update on the XJ6. Last time you saw this, it was a couple weeks before Christmas, um, and we had some issues with it not running right, you know, bucking and things. And yes, it was just water and fuel. That's all it was. So in that last video, the last thing I did was I put another dose of, um, it's called different things and different things. I think most of you guys know it probably is dry gas. I think it's just an additive. It's basically just some sort of alcohol and it, it binds to water that's in the fuel and it splits it up and it makes it so that it can actually burn in the engine. Um, so after I ran like a double dose of that, it's been perfectly fine. So I think I had some water droplets in the carburetors, even after we drained the tanks and everything, they were just dancing around in there. Uh, now I just filled up again, and I'm going to continue running. Um, yeah, the dry gas just additive every single time I fill up, just because it's. Um, yeah, these tanks are prone to getting leaks in them. It's quite easy; they can freeze over and things. And also, it is. Um, it's been really, really rainy and really humid where I live and really foggy so it's just it's really really cheap and you can pour it in all the time it doesn't hurt anything so i think we're gonna run that now for the whole winter and that it is uh running happily heat is working great uh just the reason i have the thick gloves is just because i was out checking tire pressure and that thing was really cold to hold on to that metal but other than that it is running along nicely of course there's a little bit of extra noise uh, now because it's really windy and also these studded winter tires are excellent of course they're quite noisy but uh, yeah, I wouldn't drive around a classic like this in these icy road conditions with anything else but really good studded winter tires but I'm gonna head up back and then um, we'll find some place to stop we'll see we'll probably just be at the house because there's a bit more snow up on the mountains so it's not really a good place to stop and we'll go through the whole list of every single car in the fleet and the plans for them for 2024. I think we can actually pull over here and stop for a little bit. And we'll go through the list. It's quite slippery out, but uh, like I said, these study tires, they're really good. And yeah, we'll let it run because it is really freezing outside. So, made it quite a list, no particular order or anything. But let us start with, let's start with this car, uh, 1975 XJ6, my daily driver. Um, not too much actually on the list. One thing I want to do, which I want to do for a really long time, is finally replace the right hand fuel tank. It's leaking, so I haven't been using it ever. I'm only running on the left. I do have a good used right hand tank and I have a pump and everything. So get that going, replace that. That is something I want to do. Um, and I also want to fix some small paint issues on the other side, which uh, I think I've shown you guys, but there's some cracking in the paint there. Um, so I want to just 
localize small areas and fix that myself and try and try and hopefully get that as nice as I can without you know spending hardly any money. Other than that, we have the Rover P6, 1972 P6 V8. It needs new tires. They're over 20 years old, I realized, and uh, it, it's not nice to drive that car over 90 kilometers an hour. It just, uh, it's just not happy. So, uh, new tires. Fix the muffler in the back, which has a hole in it. So either fix something or buy the correct one. I think I'm going to just buy the correct one. And if there's some money left over in the budget, new shocks would be nice. Um, they're not leaking or anything. But they're still a little bit noisy, they squeak a bit far from sitting, so new shocks, that would be really nice. Other, um, hey, let's go into some daily drivers here. So we have the P38 Range Rover, which um, drove actually this morning and it's um, running really well. A couple of small issues, there's a small water leak on the eight posts on the right hand side. and I don't think it's coming from there's some common water issues on them there's a cover that covers this pollen filter and that can let water in i've silicone that cover shut and it hasn't helped so there's something else it's coming in really where the blower motor is on that side in really really heavy rains um so i don't know i have to just try and fix that i have purchased a tow bar for it so I'm gonna fit that and I want to paint the fuel filler uh, cover I bought another one because it was missing and I got the paint code now so I want to order some paint to paint that and fit that so really not that big of a list and I've already bought everything for that except the paint so um, pretty good to go there the L322 my wife's supercharged uh, Range Rover it's her daily uh, not that much they need. However, I gave her something for Christmas. I gave her a tow bar for that thing. She, um, well, like I said, we're going to use the Range Rovers to tow with now. So I'm going to fit a tow bar to that thing as well. Um, so hopefully that's pretty straightforward. And that's pretty much it for the L322. Um, the reason uh, that we're doing that is because we're selling the Excite, which we've used to tow the horses with and things here. But that thing is being sold, so we're going to fit tow bars to the other big tow vehicles. So X-Type really, I have a small couple of things I want to fix on it before I sell it and I can't really sell it until we have you no know, tow bars in the other cars but once I've done that I want to um, um, just give it a fresh service. It's time for a service for it and um, just a couple of small cosmetic issues, touch up some paint in a couple of places and then um, take some nice pictures and sell that. It's a really really good X-Type. Um, but like I said, I don't really need it. We then have another car that's for sale, which is the Morris 1300 in the Trading Up series. Uh, there's a little bit of a pause in that series, and that was just because um, I realized now that I was going to prepare to do this full time, and I needed all the time I could to juggle my previous work and this at the same time, trying to you know get a little bit financially stable at least. So that's thing been on halt, but I have all the parts for it so I want to replace all the coolant hoses because they're cracked flush through the system I want to go through the brakes on it um, I want to scrape all the loose under seal of it and put some new ones that looks nice underneath and then inspect it and I have a buyer probably for it so sell it or oh, if he doesn't want it then yeah, we'll find another buyer for it we have the XJ40 Daimler with the blown head gasket I saw I bought a little bit on accident um, I haven't bought or started anything for that yet. That's something I want to do. I don't know, that might be like February or something. I can get to that. We're going to do the head gasket on it. Hopefully when we take it apart, the head isn't damaged. That can be taken off and just lightly skimmed and we can put a gasket set on it and that'll be fine. I want to fix the interior after we get it running right. Uh, all of the lacquer is peeling on a lot of the wood, so get that off, but the veneer is fine. I'm going to re-lacquer it. Uh, there's a slight hole in one of the seats, so uh, I'll probably get company to fix that. Put a new headliner in it and have Dan the painter paint the rear wings and the boot in the back, which all have a little cracking in it. Fix that and then sell that on uh, to a um, someone who wants a really nice XG40 Daimler. It's low mileage, it's an early one digital dash, and I think it's going to be a really good one. Uh, so that would just be a little fun project on the side for more XG40 content and then uh, that will bring some uh, good money in for the other projects. 
we have uh, let me see what else the xjs convertible um that just really needs a service uh just oil and filter cool and all that is fine and then it needs something to have done with the convertible top like we talked about i do have a new stock pump for it it's getting slower and slower going up so we're going to see if it fits the pump or if it is the hydraulic ramps fix that get the top to go up nice and quick again and um yeah that thing should be ready for summer again in let me see right now in a week and a half i will get my 1975 xjs back from paint so that's gonna be really excited to see it's now rust free and all painted and should be looking great i want to continue of course with it and I'm still in touch with simply performance and we're talking about all the things we're going to do with it and we're going to see if this is possible or not i don't know but i would like to be able to drive it in 2024 we'll see how that goes there's a lot to do it is just a bare rolling shell at the moment it doesn't have an engine in it uh but it needs to go through all the hoses all the fuel injectors coolant system it needs uh, brakes gone through it needs yeah the heater made, uh, it needs a lot new carpets and things i do have an interior for it now and i do have a company I'm working with to get it uh recolors there's all these things happening with it um so that's gonna be really fun uh, my plan is to have that all the way in my workshop so um, it's going to be third just in my workshop and just sit there until it's done and I'm going to try and work on it pretty much like one day a week is my plan to work on but we'll go through some of that a little bit more later uh, 1977 XJ12 the white one it ended the last season with um, you know failing to proceed and then we realized it had jumped to timing 60 degrees uh, put the distributor in, in a different way and then it ran so something has happened it has one timing chain which drives both camshaft and a jack shaft in the middle which goes to the distributor so something has happened there either chain has jumped so the jack shaft has jumped or the gears on the jack shaft have stripped something has happened so we have to go inside that engine and have a look and we start with a camera see if we can figure something out if not yeah we need to take off the front half of the engine probably replace chain tensioners and things so we're going to see if that's going to happen this year or not just depending on time uh, which is a shame because otherwise that car is great uh, really just running excellent until that happened uh, a couple of days ago I introduced my latest project my uh, XJ12 Coupe which you guys seem to really really love so I'm excited about that I probably won't do too much with it but i just want to see if it runs so we'll rebuild the carbs go through it, have an external fuel system fire it up like i said and see if it runs so that will probably be a video on that and then cleaning it up and doing all that so that's probably all i'm going to do with it 2024 because it needs funds it needs time and like i said i the xjs is you know it was here first so it's further ahead in the queue we have another car which was here first um which is, it's a long-term project, and I've told many times I'm not stressed about it or anything if it takes a while. It's a 1966 S-Type. Um, I'd say it's 98% stripped, ready for the paint shop. Uh, there's a couple small things in the engine bay left. There's a couple comb strips left on it, and otherwise it's ready to go to, uh, to Dan. Uh, he's told me how much he wants for it. It's very reasonable to fix the rust and paint it. Um, but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna wait on that for a little bit because that's really the cheap part of that restoration after that we have need to rebuild the engine need to rebuild the transmission it needs new carpets needs new headliner all the rubbers everything so um but yeah my goal is to in 2024 get that to him and have it painted and have it back then we'll see what happens after that when i start putting but have it, it a rust-free painted shell by 2024 at least that is the goal it is quite some some things but three cars like i said are leaving when the morris leaves we'll keep my eyes out for um the next thing in that trading up series we'll see what we find it would be fun to have a convertible now with uh, summer coming up i turn down the heat it's quite hot here now uh but we'll see what i find it's uh 
could be anything, but the whole part point of the trading up series is I'm going to try and not buy Jags because we're going to try and stay sort of away from that and just explore other cars. That's why we've explored now the ADO 16 Morris 1300. There will be videos on that, finishing it, it up and also driving, enjoying it a bit. And if the person who wants it um, uh, still wants it, which I've had some contact with him, then uh, I'm going to drive and deliver to him. And that would be like a three hour drive to deliver it. So that's going to be kind of fun as well. But the elephant in the room is, well, now I am doing YouTube full time and running classic car shops. I'm trying to set up my time. So what I'm going to do, at least for now, because yes, YouTube does help my income a bit, but my main income is the classic car shop. Um, YouTube is like maybe a third of it. So of course I can't you know, focus all my time on my cars uh, for you, for videos. I need to do the customer cars as well. And I will film those as well when they're interesting things. And there are some interesting customer cars coming up. And we're going to talk about that, I think, in the next video where I'm going to go through some of the things that's been going on there and some of the future customer projects that at least I have booked in now until the summer. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm, I've been going back and forth with this. I think I'm going to focus four days a week on customer work and that's just doing that and then one day a week I will focus on my own stuff. Uh, so one in my own cars, one in projects, GXJS, something like that and filming for that and then any other free time because I sometimes go out um, in the evenings, I usually go out a little bit on the weekends sometimes, so any of the free time around that I'm going to try and also work on my own stuff and on the fleet. But at least that's the plan for now. Um, maybe it will change um, that maybe I'll do two days a week um, later for um, non-customer stuff like mail stuff. If uh, using things pick up on YouTube, then I can more rely on that. So it all really sees. But we have a plan for the fleet. I think as you guys see, there will be a lot of fun videos that are coming up. But um, January, just a little bit of a slow start here getting everything going uh this week's kind of slow next week with a lot of things going on so you get to see that but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed just coming along and just a little bit of a um yeah a little bit of a plan of what's going to happen now in the beginning of um all of 2024 with the fleet so you see that there are there's plans for every single car on here and hopefully we'll be able to get to all of them anyway thank you so much for watching i hope this is a bit of a rambling video and um, you know we'll get back in the workshop really soon i just need like i said a slow slow start to the year anyways if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel it really does help out a lot until next time i'm adam this is living with a classic i'll see you soon